Right, uh, back from my travels to Paris yesterday and back to dog walking. Uh, so, Wilson fans. <laughs> there he is. Right, been lots of questions uh, recently about Renault's um, exhaust blown rear wing. Um, so I thought we'd get into that a little bit today. Uh, what is it? Why are they doing it? How are they doing it? And is it legal? But first, Claire and I are being pretty much forced to come to the pub for breakfast. Well, what can I do? The kitchen's out of action with the builders in. Well, breakfast was lovely. Um, Wilson was pretty well behaved uh, in the pub, <laughs> which makes a change. Um, anyway, aerodynamic surfaces. Um, every aerodynamic device on a Formula One car, like a wing or like a, uh, an aerodynamic uh, underfloor diffuser, for example, works by exploiting the air pressure differences uh, around different areas of the car. And so, for example, a rear wing has high pressure uh, above the wing, it has low pressure below the wing, uh, the high pressure wants to flow towards the low pressure, uh, therefore um, you know it pushes down on the wing surface and pushes the car into the floor and that is essentially downforce. The air that hits the front of that rear wing shape uh, has to bend around the surface uh, and the shape of the aerofoil um, and that means that the air that goes underneath the underside of the wing has to go around a larger curve uh, and it speeds up. Going around that extra surface speeds up the airflow. So the airflow underneath the rear wing is going faster than that on top of the wing. Um, in doing so, the air underneath the wing creates a low pressure environment. The air, the air pressure is lower beneath the surface of the wing than the airflow going on top of the wing, which is high pressure. Now, if we take that very basic fundamental that says if we can speed the airflow up underneath on the underside of the rear wing we'll create a bigger pressure differential and therefore because of aerodynamic principles we'll generate more downforce we can start to look at ways to help speed the airflow up when we had uh, what was termed monkey seats on the car last year um, we had uh, that little tiny winglet which sat uh, kind of just underneath almost the rear wing and what teams ended up doing with that was directing their exhaust flow which is very fast moving very high energy airflow exiting the exhaust of course on full throttle that speed of that airflow is incredibly rapid and they were directing that at the monkey seat which in turn directed it straight up to hit the underside of the rear wing therefore increasing the speed of the airflow that runs along the underside of that rear wing's plane now monkey seats have been banned for this year uh, so that little uh, area that the teams used to exploit with that tiny little winglet uh, has essentially been narrowed right down and there is almost nothing left in terms of bodywork or wings that the teams can put in that area so what Renault have managed to do, and this is not as effective as what we've had in the past using the monkey seat. The monkey seat wasn't really designed to generate downforce in itself. It's not a wing that generated downforce. It was literally there to help direct that airflow up towards the rear wing. So what Renault have decided to do this year is to try and directly blow the exhaust uh, plume directly at the underside of the rear wing. Now, you can't literally just point the exhaust at the bottom of the rear wing because the rules will give a, a very specific position and a very specific angle. No more than five degrees in an upwards trajectory can the uh, exhaust sit. Well, what Renault have managed to do is maximise and use all of those five degrees that they're allowed. And they've also managed to lift the exhaust position up a bit higher bringing it closer to the underside of the rear wing. In doing so, in doing both of those things, they have been able to direct at least some of that very high speed, high energy airflow coming out of the exhaust pipe into the path of the already pretty high speed airflow that's rushing around the underside of the rear wing. In doing so, speeding the whole lot up. And as I said before, create faster airflow on the underside of that rear wing 
you create a bigger pressure differential and more downforce. <laughs> Wilson loving life. So that's how they're doing it uh, and why they're doing it. Essentially generating a bit of free extra downforce. And it's the same principle when we had exhaust blown diffusers, the teams were pointing the exhaust flow at the diffuser area to again maximize that pressure differential between the two areas of the diffuser uh, and essentially gain a bit of extra, um, extra downforce. Um, you know, the thing with exhaust, blowing the exhaust is that the speed of the airflow coming out of the exhaust can be to some extent controlled by the driver and the team because it's related to uh, engine RPM um, or they can use the MGUH the, uh, the, the motor generator unit that sits uh, connected to the turbo that's the unit that spins up the turbo um, to kind of prevent exhaust uh, prevent turbo lag and if they can do that mid corner for example when you would normally be off the throttle and therefore RPM would be low and therefore exhaust plume speed would be low. If you can spin up the MGUH during that period of time, you can essentially generate a bigger exhaust plume and speed up that airflow around the rear wing, giving you extra downforce mid corner when you really, really need it. You might have seen at the test uh, Renault having to run uh, a strip of heat shielding on the underside of that rear wing main plane. Uh, and that's pretty obviously, I expect, um, because of the high temperatures coming out of the exhaust. And if you leave those untreated, directly blowing at that carbon fibre rear wing, it can delaminate um, the carbon fibre layers. So they've had to test it by putting some sort of heat shielding uh, and gradually they can start to peg that back if it proves that it's not causing any major problems. Is it legal? Well, yes, it is legal. It's probably not what... The, you know, the FIA intended when the regulations were written around removing the monkey seat, but Renault have managed to do it within the rules, within the five degrees that are allowed on the exhaust tailpipe and within the positioning of the exhaust that's also written into the regs. So absolutely, it's, it's legal and it's one of those loopholes that I love to see Formula One teams trying to exploit uh, in this sport. I think it's one of the brilliant, brilliant areas of it and I absolutely applaud them for giving it a go.